Hello everyone, FPOP here. Today is May 16th, Return of Rome uh, will be launched. Actually, uh, as I could see on the stand, they are at, uh, put out new achievements. They seem to be pretty great. A lot of cool things to do in the campaigns. And uh, let me see, yeah, I couldn't see my game updating, so I probably will need to wait for a while. But hell yeah, it's today, very good, I'm very excited, and it will be a great day. However, I believe that me, as an old dog who played a lot of Age of Empires 1 on single player, but still, I got a little bit of experience on how to understand each civilization. I believe that people that are new to the game, or either Age of Empires 2 players, uh, want to know more about the older civilizations. These Age of Empires 1 civilizations are now going to be transported into 2. It's very relevant to understand and simplify each one of them. So let's go. I'll go one by one and I will talk about civilization. I will give a brief summary. I will tell you what will be the best civilization before you play the game. The one that I would recommend you to enjoy for now because I believe that there will be much more upgrades. Just like we see on the regular Age of Empires 2, I believe Return of Rome civilizations will also have special updates regarding how the balance will work out. But now let's check. I will, I will show you each one of them. And by the end, I will tell you, along with the best one, the other that are really good ones, and the main aspect that I believe that this Return of Rome will bring to the game. So let's start with the Syrians. I will go just straight to this part of civilization bonuses. Uh, I will not show you a lot of uh, very complex graphics, I be, uh, or I don't know, complex charts or anything. I will just tell you briefly and resume uh, uh, and summarize each of the most important things that you should know about each civilization. So let's go, Assyrians. So as you can see, they will get a bonus for siege workshops and also there will be this uh, change for siege upgrades. The thing is Assyrians, they are great for Bowman Rush, period. And they are also a great civilization if you like archers overall. They will focus uh, now also on siege, so it will be like an archer siege civilization. The aspects of the civilizations are kind of different from Age of Empires 2. Sometimes they don't have that much of resources, it really varies. Some of them are very straightforward for what they do. You kind of have to follow a certain unit or a certain uh, military building in order to achieve the best of civilization. But yeah, the, in, the Syrians, in short, they do very well with the archers. They shoot faster, they have a... a, a a briefer, uh, their period of reload time is uh, less compared to the regular ones. So you shoot faster. So there's more attacks. So you can convert more attacks faster against enemy units. They are pretty great. I believe that it's an interesting civilization. Uh, keep this in mind because Bowman Rush will be the first thing that people are probably want to do. We have many options, but regarding it, uh, keep the Archer civilizations in mind. So let's follow up for the Babylonians. The Babylonians will get now the chariots with one Pierce Armor. That's a great news, in my opinion. Because Pierce Armor, you don't get this very often. Actually, you can only upgrade the Pierce Armor of infantry units. You cannot upgrade the Pierce Armor of your archers or of your cavalry overall. Uh, well, there is a small exception for the mounted archer. But for chariots, one piece armor, that adds a lot to Babylonians. And along with that, we also have builders that work 10% faster. That's also great because Babylonians, they are a defensive civilization. They have bonuses related to walls and related to towers. They also get better stone miners. So, but in, in short, I believe that you get a better uh, turtling. I don't think that it's all that good. It's that's especially for new players. I believe that if you like to turtle, you have a hard time in Age of Empires 1. But still, now we have some other functionalities that probably will help you to at least protect your villagers. But remember, it's not like Age of Empires 2. Your towers, your town center, your town center do not shoot arrows at all. And your towers do not shoot extra arrows with uh, villagers inside. Keep this in mind. Interesting civilization, if you like to be defensive, go for Babylonian spirit. And uh, now the chariots with Pierce Armor, they will be better, in my opinion. They will have a better offensive. And this uh, defensive aspect of Babylonians will also transport the chariots. Because it will be better to fight back. 
they do not have a uh, very big economic, uh, uh, I would say, bonus. They have better sun miners, but I'm not entirely sure. You can use it technically to get, I don't know, slingers or maybe try to do something with towers. Tower rushes do not work that well on Azure Pearls 1. You should try, but it's not the same. Because again, you cannot get extra arrows with your villagers inside of towers. So keep this in mind. It's good. Now they are better. And the builder is working faster. Might also transport as a better thing for the offensive aspect of Babylonians. Not only chariots will be better to attack also with burst armor, just like they can defend better. So they can also be better regarding economic and building up. I also must say that I'm not entirely sure if buildings, uh, the builders working faster will also uh, be applied to the wonder construction. That would be big. That would be big, in my opinion. If you were only talking about the wonder uh, races or wonder victory, that would be great. I don't know if they updated or if they did just like the Spanish bonus in Age of Empires 2. Uh, next civilization, Cartagian. So the Cartagian, they got nobility free. And now that's important because all the units affected by nobility, as far as I know, the mounted ones, uh, they also get a bonus on top, of, on top of nobility free. You need to build your GC, your government center, which is a very important, especially when you are booming. Uh, Cartagians also start with extra resources, 50 of uh, each of extra basic resource uh, in a similar way of what happens with the Persians on Age of Persia 2. And also they do well in sea. But for Cartagians, I would say that they are a very good elephant civilization and also a very good navy civilization. They do very well. They are very complete with this. And uh, I uh, search. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh yeah, the academy units and elephant units, they have plus uh, extra 25% uh, uh, hit points. Yeah, that's a, a main bonus of them. And let me check. Oh, there is a small... Mm. Okay, now there is an asterisk here. I don't know what it really means, but that's what I know about them. And they have also good camel riders. That's something that I remember as well. And, oh yeah, transport ships move faster. So, overall, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good civilization for elephant, camel units, and navy. I believe that it's a very uh, safe way of playing. I like, to wait, uh, I like to play with Cartagians. They do well on land and they do well on sea. Good civilization and also the team bonuses. Were, they are new things. They also get the Pierce Armor, which is valuable in this game, remember. So for fairy galleys, they get the best fairy galleys in the game. So very good. If you got in, in your team a Cartagian, you probably want a civilization with fairy galleys because not every civilization has fairy galleys. The tech trees on Age of Empires uh, 1, Return of Rome now, they are much more limited because we have many standard uh, tech trees in Age of Empires 2 overall. Most of the I, uh, most of the civilizations, they have uh, long swordsmen, uh, they have the spearmen, so they have at least the basics. Sometimes in Age of Empires 1 civilizations, they don't have even the first uh, unit of a uh, uh, tech tree line. So it's very important. Sometimes you don't have fairy galleys, so that team bonus will be useless for you. Keep this in mind. Chosen. Chosen is a very infantry civilization. Uh, I believe that if you really like infantry, if you do well with your uh, initial barracks and you want to focus on that, of course, you need to uh, mess around with your army and try to configure it better, but they do really well with infantry. If you go Chosen, you should use. As a bonus, they also get cheaper uh, monks, and now they are being added at team bonuses, where walls get uh, plus four line of sight. I remember on Age of Empires 3 that there was a strategy that you could put a lot of one tile of wall around the map, and then you'd get line of sight. That was cool. That was pretty interesting. Uh, it was a way of kind of getting more... Uh, it's kind of an outpost, because you don't have outposts on Age of Empires 3. And I would like to say that maybe that would be interesting. Again, I would try that. It's a very uh, out-of-the-box strategy. You just put a lot of dots in the middle of the map, one tile of wall, and that can be a very cheap outpost. So let's see how it should work out. And you get these team bonuses, which is very unusual, in my opinion. Um, the team bonuses, by the way, they're not really... Some of them are very low profile, in my opinion. They add a little bit of tweak, so they're playing really soft in Age of Empires uh, 
uh, to Rise of Rome. I really like that because Age of Empires 2, we got so much bonuses and so much theme bonuses which are so good. But in this case, we got small details and I like that. Egyptians. As I said, oh, Chosen, you go for Monks out as well because they're cheaper. So Monks and Infantry, that's pretty interesting. Now go for Egyptians. Egyptians are Chariot and Monks, period. They also get uh, better miners, uh, uh, oh, sorry, gold miners. Just like Babylonians got better stone miners, Egyptians got very good uh, gold miners. So that's the uh, very interesting aspect. They got a good tech tree. Um, they do, I believe that they have pretty good uh, ranged units. And one thing that really calls my attention is that they still get very good monks and now they will get even better monks because now the team bonuses that the team bonus now will be priests with plus one pierce armor okay that's that's pretty great i believe that it will be very interesting they get even tougher even better monks that's so great and also the chariots of the egyptians will be very good as well uh they got extra hp for chariots so you probably will face both archer chariots uh chariot archer sorry and also the chariots as well they also have the upgrade for side chariots so pretty great now okay moving on try to if you like monks and feel like chariots you should try egyptians those that's good greeks okay now greeks i will say i'm very in my opinion greeks were a problem i remember very well age of Pars one definitive edition that they got some tweaks because i never really liked it to play with greeks the first they have a very limited archer range very limited uh they do very well with academy units but you you need to get to at least your bronze age to enjoy it so uh and they don't have many uh, they don't have really good bonuses for our game that's the thing they get now a better uh, monks because they already uh, it was common to use monks with Greeks, but now they get polytheism and astrology free with first temple, so that's great. And uh, now the team bonus is market markets cost uh, less fifty percent of wood, that's great. And actually, I believe that's improvement or their arts because they only have the bowman. Period. Bowman is the basic archer of the Greeks. You don't get anything extra for that, but you can upgrade fully your bowman. You get very good on navy. I, I should remember that. So Greeks are good on navy, and they are also good with academy units. That's very interesting. They also get uh, some uh, monks to follow their their army. I usually remember about that, and also siege units. That's what I remember from that. But I I not really entirely sure. I think it's an interesting civilization. You get very good for defense as well. But now with the markets being much more cheaper, uh, that will make also a difference because you can get the wood upgrade and the wood upgrade makes your archers better. So opening with Bowman Rush, interesting. And also it's a team bonus. So it's if you're, it's a team game, that's pretty great because getting markets, it's very important in Age of Empires 1. And it will be in Rise of Rome as well. High Tides. One of the most, I believe that... For beginners, very good and also very powerful. So it's kind of where both a civilization is very powerful for people who play uh, who plays very well and also for people who are starting the game because high tides, they can do a little bit of everything. In fact, in Age of Powers 1 Definitive Edition, they got a lot of downgrades. They got a lot of uh, uh, nerfs because they were very powerful. They had Centurion. It was removed. I believe it's still removed on uh, Return of Rome. Now they also are uh, removed in Definitive Edition some tech upgrades. If I'm not mistaken, irrigation was removed. That's a big thing. High tides are very good with archers because they got plus one attack. So that's important. That's very, very good because your archers take it better. Remember, in Age of Empires 1, you had upgrades for your archers. You get only your melee armor and also for your range. You get one. Uh, upgrade for your attack at the government center not entirely sure if it's on the iron age sorry i i just uh talking straight from my mind but the high tides they are very good in tech tree they have a little bit of everything so they are very very complete they don't have improved bowman because i played a lot with high tides but they still got a lot they got chariots they got camels they got elephants 
I, I don't want to commit mistakes, but they are pretty great overall. They also got a very good academy. They don't have the last upgrade of the academy unit, but they still got overall very good. Fully upgradable, so all storage bits upgrades are available. And the wheel will cost 50% less. And also it will have a it will be it will research faster, by the way. That's great. Wheel is not only good for your chariots, but also it's great for economy. Because your villagers they walk faster, so they return to resource faster. So that's a great, 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 great economic bonus for them. They also do very well on C. Uh, no, they do not do that well on C, I believe. Uh, sorry, I, I, I was confusing with another one. They got very, they got special war galleys, but they don't get three ramps. And they also cannot upgrade their fishing boats. That's something that I remember. They don't get very good docks, and they do not get good monks. But for the rest, they do very well. And there is a small team bonus. Uh, this team bonus is pretty, uh, it really caught my attention, because towers provide plus four population space. That's interesting, because you can build one tower right away on Age of Empires uh, Return of Rome. You have the same resources that you had on Age of Empires 1, Defend Edition, and on the vanilla game, which is uh, 1,050 stone. And you can build a watchtower with this. So having population space with towers, it's interesting, it's pretty unique. Uh, maybe you can use this in an offensive aspect. That would be something. Maybe you can try to analyze other ways of using it. I, I, I'm very curious about that. Now, okay, so keep in mind the high tides, I truly recommend uh, Macedonian. Macedonian, they are a very interesting civilization. They are like the Teutons of Age of Empires 1 because they are very, very hard to convert. They are they have a resistance of uh, multiplier of plus uh, multiplier of four against conversion. So it takes four, uh, the, the time that you need to convert a unit, it takes four, uh, four times multiplied with Macedonian. So that, it takes a long, long time to convert the Macedonian unit. It's crazy. There is one thing, there is one catch. With Macedonians, you don't have temples. You don't have temples at all. You cannot have monks. They, I believe that it's something related to the fact that they are... Uh, they were a very long and short-lived empire with many religions, so there was no official religion, who knows? But there is no monks with Macedonians. What happens here is that you can ignore, basically. But the, the real nice thing about here is that they have cheaper CG units. They, do not, they cannot upgrade them to their maximal potential, but they have great CG units because they are cheaper. So you can gather siege units rolling early on the game compared to the other civilizations if you are pretty fast. That's very good. Another thing that I remember is that they have great, great, great academy units. So the, the academy units have a plus one per armor. Remember that it's very crucial, very important. Macedonia's got that. I also search. It's it's kind of the unit that really uh it's really important to take some time and analyze her. Uh, ooh. Okay, uh, okay. All non range units have plus two line of sight, academy units have plus one per armor, bronze agent, plus two in our age. That's great, that's simply great. Zero shop units cost less 25%. Well, it's a pretty good, I would say, there is a funny thing. Carthaginians and Phoenicians, I would mention this with Phoenicians, but it's the same with Greek and Macedonian. They are very similar. If you see, even historically, they are very, very close to each other. Macedonians also got great uh, academy units, just like the Greeks. The thing with the Greeks is that, while well, the Greeks, I did not mention, they get... Um, let me check. Uh, where is it? Yeah. The Greeks, they have faster units and also cheaper units for academy. That's pretty great. But for Macedonians, for Macedonians, they got the units are harder to convert, and that's the academy units are very sensible to conversions, and they also got much, much better priest armor. So, well, in my opinion, my vision is that Macedonians are more interesting regarding it. Again, that's a that's my that's just my my theory. That's what I think. They do pretty well with this, and you guys should always try to see what you should uh, attempt because. 
Greeks are more focused on Navy and Academy units. Uh, for Macedonians, they're purely on uh, infantry, on Academy, I would say. I would say it's more Academy units rather than infantry, but okay. Um, yeah, it's... I would say it's a more offensive, in my in my opinion, it's more offensive. It's very well, if you get hit in your academy, your academy units will be great, because that's a lot of things. They will usually use monks against academy units, usually use ranged units against academy units, and Macedonians have the answer against that. Very good. The team bonus should be understood as a palisade. Why? Because walls with houses are very useful, but houses, especially... If you compare with Age of Empires 2, House Age of Empires 1 are very fragile. For Macedonians, they are a little bit uh, stronger. So that's good. Early on, you can protect yourself if you do a uh, palisade of houses, I would say. You don't have palisade walls here, so you better use what you have. Let's proceed for Minoans. So Minoans are very interesting. They get a farming bonus. Um, I like this farming bonus because now we have a uh, change on it. Instead of just plus 60 food, they, they're farmers. They work 10% faster. That's very good because you're farmers. You don't need... I believe that mm, it's kind of similar to Age of Empires 2. You need to have farmer uh, farmers farming as soon as you can. But it's a farming... When you, when you get to the farming economy, you also get to do what they do better with Minoans, which are the Composite Bowmen. The Composite Bowmen, they have extra range. They have plus two extra range. So with Minoans, they are great. You go for Composite Bowmen with Minoans. It's not even an archery civilization. I would say it's a Composite Bowmen civilization. It's uh, We can uh, kind of tell what civilization does by what kind of military building they really excel at it. They have many resources. They also get bonuses related to Navy. One thing bonus that will be very good is that dogs cost less 20% wood. I'd recommend Minoans better for uh, uh, water maps. You can do well with Composite Bowman. There are build orders for the old build orders. They kind of work nowadays. There will be some changes, but the old build orders are pretty great. And if you get Composite Bowmans uh, rolling the map early on, as soon as you can, once you, as soon as you hit the Bronze Age, you can get it very well, because this unit is very good. Again, Minos, if you like Composite Bowmans, it's a beautiful unit in my opinion, you get it. It's a pretty straightforward, pretty interesting, and also good for water maps. Uh, I also, let me say, uh, ooh, okay, yeah, the ships are also cheaper, as I said, Navy Civilization, and yeah, that's it. Composite Bowman Civilization. Palmyrium. Trading civilization. What does that mean? Is that the tributes are free with Palmyra. Well, it's funny to think about that. And also, the traders, they return 20% more gold. The definition of Palmyra back in the days, of the old days, was a trading civilization. And that's very different. I don't know how they will work out with this. But the Palmyra, they are very good for team games. You want to have a Palmyra with you in a team game. But for the individual games, I, it was very bizarre because they focused so much in one aspect. That was the first designs made by Ensemble Studios, uh, way before Age of Empires 2. So I wouldn't say weaker, but it's very weird because it's a trading civilization. It's We don't have this kind of thing on Age of Empires 2. We have civilizations with bonus for traders, but in that way, no. The team bonus is technology to research 30% faster. Interesting. But Palmyrians, they also are camo units. And they also have a very different build orders. If you like the civilization, play it. But it's a very different build order. The, the villagers are more expensive. They have more armor. And they work 20% faster. It looks good, but it was confusing for me. Because for the other civilizations, it's very, very different. The camo riders are more faster. Okay, it's good, but tribute is not taxed and trade units return 20% gold. And that's what I remember. I remember that uh, about using camos with Palmyrin as well. I don't know, they probably will change to, uh, the civilization with the time, or maybe they'll keep that way. They're very unique, very unique. Maybe it's better that way. I like this, to be honest, but I don't know how the player base will react to a civilization. It's very, very unique. 
that's one thing that I like Age of Wars 1. The civilizations were crazy. Persians, they have a long history regarding how this concept of the civilization was back when the game was launched. It was not even... The definition of Persians was a deathmatch civilization, period. Because they got a very good tech tree. They have limitations, again. They don't have chariots, as an example. But they have excellent elephants. Their elephants are faster. So that was a great thing about them. Because elephants are such powerful in Age of Persians 1. And they got very good upgrades. Um, they got good hunters. That's They weren't that match, but they got like an early civilization bonus. Which is different. They got very good hunters. So you're going to focus on hunting. That's something that I could see on videos around. That hunting is very important. And people already know that hunting gazelles is actually easier to lure in my opinion. And also hunting uh, the elephants, which is like hunting the boar. is also not that hard. But uh, for Persians, focus on hunting and focus especially on cavalry. Because right now, the team bonuses is like a bonus that everyone wants to have. Because the stables work 20% faster. That's very good. Uh, arguably one of the best uh, team bonuses that you could get. The walls they now are cheaper, interesting, and also ballistics. So that's something new. Because Persians, they had elephant archers, and they also had uh, mounted archers, which are the horse archers. But they did not have ballistics, so the precision was kind of disgusting. But now, they got faster elephants with ballistics, and they have uh, mounted archers. And I must say, they have the last upgrade for mounted archers, which is the heavy mounted archer. That's great. Persians are a great civilization. The faster stables means that you probably also hit 2 age. You should try to get a stable and get the scouts as soon as you can. Make sure that you actually are using your hunting because you need food for your stables. Uh, scouts, they demand a lot of food and you're gonna need this food from hunting. Another good thing is that they are very good for a navy. So they are great. The three, three rams, they fire 20% faster and... Uh, now they change it, <laughs> as you can read right now. It's still 25%, but now it's less overpower. It starts on 15%, 20%, 25% on each age that you advance. Very great. I totally recommend. I like that. Let's go for Phoenician. Just like Cartagians, they focus on elephants. But the Phoenician, they get cheaper elephants. Getting cheaper elephants, in my opinion, it's great. You can get them uh, easier. So as soon as you hit the Iron Age, you can get a lot of uh, elephants with Phoenicians. And they also got some pretty interesting bonuses for the docks. So they got now uh, addition of 4 line of sight um, plus 150% HP. That's great. And now they also got a team bonus of with archers with plus 2 line of sight. Eh. Okay, <laughs> does not hurt at all. Uh, I did not play that much with Phoenicians. Let me check because I do not know the exact percentages. So yeah, cheaper elephants. Yeah, very good woodcutters. That's a very good, a very good bonus that they have. 15% uh, faster naturally and carry plus two wood. That's great. They get this early on. So that's pretty great. Uh, yeah, I also get this bonus, uh, reload time of catapult three rams and juggernauts are, they got a better reload time, so they, it's less 24%. Okay, that's great. I cannot really complain about them, but they, they're missing some stuff that I don't like. For example, fire galley, a ballista, catapult, horse archer, horse archer, I really like it, uh, heavy cavalry, another unit, so... Yeah, you see, uh, you get uh, chariots as an example, so that's a thing. But Phoenicians and Cartesians have a, a, a relation historically. I prefer Cartesians. You know, I I, I I know more about Cartesians because I played more with them. I prefer Cartesians over Phoenicians, period. Romans. Okay, uh, interesting civilization, very, very focused on infantry and also with siege units. Now, with Balis and Lapolis with plus one range. That's good. Team bonus, Priest heals 50% uh, faster. Okay, that's great. They also got cheaper buildings. That's great. It really helps if you're starting the game. So, if you're really into infantry, siege units, you should try Romans. They are pretty good. They also get Centurions, uh, which is a great. So, it's a very pure infantry civilization, in my opinion. 
Uh, they have limitations uh, regarding infantry. They have limitations on stable. They got side chariots, so they got the last upgrade for chariots. Uh, monks, I do. They are good for healing. I do not recall them as very being that good for conversions or compared to other. They are better monk civilizations, but they are good for healing. So, uh, I don't want to miss uh, any other detail for these civilizations. Yeah. That's pretty much. Oh, yeah. And by the way, the Swordsman line, they have a, a less 33% reload time, just like Japanese Age of Pirates 2. So they attack faster. That's a very good. When you can hit faster your enemies, that's always a very good bonus. We Sometimes we focus on range or attack, but attacking faster means that you're, you're delivering the full attack more often. So that's great. You're into infantry. Go for Romans. Go for Chosen. Uh, focus on these civilizations because some civilizations do not work that out uh, that well at all with certain aspects with certain military buildings. But again, they have uh, they they are pretty good with resources. I would say you have fun with the Romans, that's for sure. We are close to the end, but there is uh, I would tell you uh, we are probably getting in the end. It's the most interesting part of this video. Let's go for the Shank. Shank, very, very popular. If you're from Vietnam and watch this video, I know, you guys, I saw a lot of uh, high-level games. I do not watch that close the Vietnam scene, but I know that Shank are one of the favorite ones. So Shank, they got a cavalry line, which attacks 10% faster. And they got a very good cavalry line. They gain access to ballistics. That's another great, great addition. And the team bonus is great. It's pound center. Town centers provide plus four population space. It means that when you start the game, you get a plus four population space right away. So you can delay your first house. You can explore better. There is, it really helps the opening. So that would be great. Shang is a very, very, it's a, a civilization that's played very often. And definitely, definitely, in my opinion, it's the civilization that you should try because they get also cheaper villagers. They cost 40 wood. That's a great discount. They also start with the less food. Okay. Uh, it's a kind of weird starting uh, uh, way to start a game. Just similar to how do you start with Chinese Age of Wars 2. It's less weird compared to Pomeran. But they have this, uh, this discount. It's very good for booming. They also get better walls. So it's plus 60% hit points. And now we have this new addition of the cavalry line. So, <clears throat> for them, I would say uh, you probably go with cavalry units. They have a very, very good cavalry units. They also get, which I believe that it's very important, the mounted archer. So, with ballistics and uh, chariot archers and also the regular chariots in your stable, these are great, great additions. There are very intensive games in Vietnam that I watch it, that it was all about Shang, because Shang is very good about Bumi. They're, since they got cheaper villagers, they can advance better. If you're really mastering a civilization, I believe that Shang will be one of the top civs. One of the top. It will not be the better one. I did not reach the better civilization. But let's follow up. Shang, great civilization. Cavalry line. So your scout will attack better. Right away on 2 age. Very, very good. Delivering much their blows faster. So that's a great, great, great. One of the civilizations that you should go in my opinion. Sumerians, okay, Sumerians, very cool name, uh, very cool history, ancient civilization, the cradle of the civilization and writing and the invention of will. But for Sumerians, I must say, they are very good farmers. If you're not mistaken, they are good with the academy units. Um, interesting tech tree, I remember that they even had elephants. But they, uh, they always lacked something, in my opinion. They always look good, but at the same time, they lack it something. I play a lot of single player and especially campaigns. But now they get a camel with purse armor. That's great, in my opinion, pretty unique. Uh, i totally okay with that. And as a team bonus, town centers cost less 25% uh, wood. They get a team civilization, in my opinion. In, just like we have Palmyran as a trading, we had Sumerian as a team civilization. Because just having 10 on your team, even if they die, uh, or if they, you know, for any reason, uh, getting a Sumerian, even if they, if you're getting civilizations that are powerful or probably even 
more interesting. Sumerians, in my opinion, will get much, much stronger. Because for a team game, with cheaper town centers, it really helps you with your booming. Because when you get your town centers, it demands you to get a government center first, and then you need to put your town center and start booming. We tend to get this much faster because it's uh, less 25%, it's less a quarter. So it's a big discount. Very good, in my opinion. Uh, let me check again. Okay. They're good with Siege. Uh, I, it's a civilization that I did not play that often. They get better farmers. So uh, the farmers get plus 125. They got beefier villagers. That's interesting. Uh, so let's say it's kind of economy, but I do not see... Um, I think it's defensive. It's a better uh, way to describe. They get uh, stronger villagers, but that does not reflect in a better economy. Just later on, it gets a better economy because you save more on farms. But again, you are not getting any resource faster. In the other hand, you get a better siege. So stone tower, catapult, and have catapult. So powerful siege. Um, let me check. Yeah, so they got Centurion, uh, no Catapult tree ram, that's that's a miss. No Legion, but that's okay, no Improved Boomin. Uh, okay, they get the Basic Elephant, but no Armored, and no Elephant Archer. Uh, no Cavalry, oh, hmm, I do not remember about that. Yeah, so I would say, I do not play it that much, they are not appealing, but I believe that now to you have much more appeal. With better camels, with a better pierce armor, I would say that maybe they will be a very good civilization to counter, for example, chariot uh, uh, chariot archers, that would be one thing, and also the mounted archers. So that's the thing, and remember, they also get they also get the ballista, oh, ballista, they get also the <clears throat> ballistics. So with ballistics and mounted archers, they can be very well because you can see they're not being uh they're not really unavailable for them here so pretty great another possibility if you have a powerful eco you have powerful units uh i probably will try to play with them more often so uh keep your eyes on sumerians i believe that they probably will do a comeback yamato oh that's that's a great that's a great civilization because they have faster villagers Oh, ooh, it was replaced. Okay, i just doing it on the fly. I just opened it. I'm reading everything about now. But now you see, uh, the faster villagers now... Okay, now we got better fishing boats. Just like the Japanese. I mean, <laughs> Japanese are famous uh, in Age of Paris 2 because they got very good fishing boats and now they got the best fishing boats in the game. Okay, uh, so a land bonus was... Uh, transported to a uh, water bonus. I don't know what I think about that. But anyway, this is... Uh, I wasn't expecting it, but that's interesting news. For here, uh, that's something that really changed a lot, because uh, watch these two lines. Stable and Archer range upgrades uh, less 30% in cost, so when you get your cavalry and upgrade to have cavalry, or when you get a mounted archer and upgrades to have it mounted archer. When you get this, it's cheaper. So that's very good for late game. But for the early game, stables and archer ranges, they cost lesser. And that's a team bonus. Another great, excellent team bonus. Very, very good. I believe that there will be some crazy combinations of, for example, Yamato and uh, Sumerian and Romans. You get, for example, the Roman will get a very, very crazy cheap town centers and very crazy cheap stables and archer range. So that's something that I want to uh, see. But among with that, Yamato also are very good with the cavalry. It, the symbol of Yamato is a cavalry. So it's different from Asian Birds 2 because you see the Japanese players do not focus so much on the cavalry. So for Yamato, you get better uh, cavalry units because they cost less. Less 15% to be more uh, specific. They also got good on ships. They are beefier. That's good. And I would say very, very good for cavalry. They have a lot of limitations. There is no fair galley, but to be honest, you probably will get so much uh, bonuses on navy that's not really that awful missing the fair galley. But again, you don't have ballista, you don't have catapult, 
you don't have a broad swordsman so forget about the japanese uh if you want to do a like totally symmetry they're not so they don't have chariot archer they don't have a chariot they don't have elephant archers they don't have war elephant no camel rider but very good on cavalry they are missing stuff on the stable but go for cavalry uh your caver your scout will be cheaper so focusing on it will be really good uh you'll get your bowmans uh running around the field early on the game because the the archer range is cheaper as well so very good civilization i believe one to top the fact that they do not have these villagers moving faster really uh, it annoys me a little bit okay guys uh we have now i would say you like cavalry shang yamato persian very good yamato very good for archer range um persians they in my opinion they are fantastic cavalry shank also very good for cavalry and also i would say that overall very good eco uh economic civilization with a very very great bonus um let's go also for the archer civilizations but for example high tides you can do a little bit of everything assyrians assyrians you have limitations but at the same time great 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 civilizations with bowmen honestly uh it's the I, I believe that if you like ranged units you cannot go wrong with both of them but remember you have limitations high tides i did not mention earlier they get for example uh they do not have slingers that's a good example but again you have many choices you have many options uh both good ranged civilizations but the best civilization in my vision the one that will be the top one the tire you guys probably know already is the lack of yet so where are you okay there you go let's go lack of yet for just gather 20 percent faster that's great that's in my opinion my favorite economic bonus in the game that's the best one why because the for uh, foraging is the base of your economy just like in John verse 2 you need to get ship in age of Pirates 1 you get to forge bushes they're the best one on it period Military units created 25% faster. They're gonna change this. If they do a crescent bonus, in my opinion, because that's amazing. That means that you can do everything faster. Uh, infantry units, stable units, archer units, that's great. Archer range units plus two melee armor. That means that they basically get the first upgrade free on top of that they can resource the first upgrade for archers. In Age of Empires 1, you cannot upgrade pierce armor of archers. There are many things different, but remember about that. But you get melee armor. So now, and uh, you also remember, on Return of Rome, the units, both the Scout and the uh, X-Men, for example, they are stronger against uh, against Pierce uh, damage. They got one Pierce base uh, uh, defense against, them, against this kind of damage. So they probably will reach a little bit often your Archer units. But I'm gonna explain at the end what, what I think will be the meta for the uh, Return of Rome. But for that matter, you also have an answer here. You have a better melee armor for your archers. So just like the Vietnamese in Age of Empires 2, they got very good archers. They got a special unique unit that is a very, very good archer, a very uh, defensive archer. They also get very good uh, archers to defend and also to an offensive power. The team bonus is house and farms build 50% faster, which is great you not get housed very often because there will be a lot of new players and in order to not get uh, housed they probably will have this to help them so that's why that's the s tire that's the top top tire like fiat is the best one period i will focus on this civilization i recommend you to focus on this civilization now let's go for the bad ports what they are missing and i will focus because they are the highlight i i would not like to spend so much time with other ones just like like fiat because even they're, what they're missing, you can work around. Aristocracy, it's about that you get faster units for your uh, academy. That does not happen here. In my opinion, you should not... Uh, it will be a limitation, of course. Not as bad as it looks like. Because they got so much better ones. And the next things that they're missing, you see that you not miss at all. Monks, I believe, do not focus on monks and do not focus on monks that much on Age of Empires uh, to Return of Rome. They lack misses, polytheism, afterlife, fantasy, in fact, they are not really good monks. 
but however let's check chain mail infantry okay they're missing this it's kind of bad uh tower shit also so they're missing the top the elite the best uh upgrades for your infantry again that'll be something that you miss overall your infantry there will be your uh achilles uh tendon siegecraft so yeah not the top uh stone mining will be uh after you do the stone mining research there will be the next one which will be the siege craft so you get a better uh you get a better villagers to destroy things you also got a better if i not mistake you got more range to your slingers something along those lines but again somebody that you can miss engineering that's pretty bad in my opinion one of the things that you probably will miss most because engineering it leaves you with much much better siege units so that's something that you miss and urbanization which upgrades it gives the double of your house space it's a new tech uh i don't think it will annoy you but it will not be that bad uh, so engineering and the infantry defensive upgrades that are things that i will miss must but remember as you can see all of the uh economy upgrades are available and in fact, if you go for the missing units, the Fallen Giant and Legion, so not really uh, infantry civilization, no camel rider, that's a limitation. Cataphract is not available, but you have a have a cavalry. So the cataphract is the last upgrade for a cavalry line, but you still have a pretty decent cavalry line, in my opinion, because you still have cavalry, you still get very good uh scouts because they will be created faster, cavalry will be created faster, and you get chariots. That's very good. You get side charts as well. Elapoli, so the last uh, siege upgrade for your... It's kind of the Scorpion, but it's not like the Scorpion because they are much more powerful. So no Elapolis, that's bad. No Ballista Tower, I can live with that. No Fargali, that would be a disadvantage. Uh, that's not an advantage for Navy. But remember, military units, so your na in your Navy... Your war galleys, your scout galleys, your trirams will uh, will be resorted faster. And no, you get it out. But you have catapult tree ram. So again, you can use this the catapult against the constructions that you might find at the coast, and you get very easy, very good to train because they train faster. So that's a good advantage. I believe that the lack of yet, it's very well designed. Maybe they'll get some tweaks. I I don't know. I it's my uh, I would say that's something that I can see in the future. They are very, very good. I love the civilization. The concept is very good. It's super open. You have uh, composite bowmen. You have chariots. You have side chariots. Uh, you don't get very good infantry. But remember, you get at least the whole plight. You get the long swordsmen. So that's if you really need to focus on the infantry, you can use it. You get all the upgrade. You, you get auto upgrades for your archer regarding their armor. You get auto upgrades for their range. Uh, you get all the upgrades regarding your um, armor for your cavalry. So that's also important. So you got very good chariots. And overall, it's a very, very well rounded civilization, in my opinion. They were very well designed in the way that I'm really curious. And I believe that's the Astire. That's what you should play. Now, this video is getting a little bit longer, but I would say the meta in this game will be, in my opinion, shifting towards cavalry and archers, because now we have formations. So it's a very long video. After I said, I must say, monks will not be strong as Age of Warriors 1, period. We have now many, many, many things that uh, signals to me, because I couldn't play the game yet, but I could see very well how it's playing out. I believe that the micro now is much better because now you can actually micro in a decent way. So focus, in my opinion, focus on your uh, in the micro aspect, in the velocity that you need to input in this game. For that matter, I believe that archer civilizations that can develop really well archers and be offensive with archers will be uh, will be really really helpful. Will be really good for the game. Cavalry civilizations will be extremely, extremely great because the game will get more faster. The game will get more dynamic in the battles. So sometimes in Age of I had the sensation that I will almost micromanage individually. So the quality of the micro was not good. Now we get formations. Now we get patrol. Now we get, uh, you know, 
we got the best things we got the are decent at fighting so individual units for example the monk or even the academy units if they are kind of messy sometimes but now you get ways to micro really well so the very slow academy units the very slow or uh, infantry units overall most of the time they're uh, pretty slow all of these units they will now face a much much more powerful range of units so if you have mounted archers if you had chariot archers they will do terrific damage it will be easier to destroy to kite around and destroy siege units so that's why I, I was focusing so much on the cavalry and on the archery right now i'm detecting what will be the best and that's the best thing if you like infantry if you like monks go for it they will still be good you can actually micro them better infantry is still powerful infantry now is much better on 2h the x-men they got even upgrade they got a natural bonus against cavalry units that's great they kind of work as a uh i don't say a lesser version of a spearman but still the archer units they will be very dominant they are very important because i could follow the vietnamese scene for a while and i could see that the, the speed that they use with the age of Empires one it's crazy they can micro they are, they can do the best micro in my opinion they are very very intensive games you will need to pay attention because cavalry fast units and also ranged units will dominate mounted archers this game they are terrific they are monsters remember you you remember if you're gonna play this game you remember about many wars mounted archers are your nemesis you don't have now the monks they do not have the sacrifice upgrade because there is an upgrade with the monks in age of Paris one that you could delete your monk and that would be instant conversion that was crazy that does not exist anymore so facing an arm of murders like the the mounted archers or any powerful other unit that will be much much harder because you don't have that magic power from from the monks i also must tell you that the for example the style that is being uh kind of advertised for us but the d3 the new d3 and sorry i know there is a specific name in vietnamese but the d3 rule this d3 rule means that the games will be very very frenetic if you want to get very good if you want to try to compete with the lead of vietnam you probably need to focus on very how to my micro these very dynamic units early on very aggressive with archers especially lack of yet you can do anything the military units are created faster so that's the main aspect it's a very long video I truly think that it helped, and now I will try to play Age of Empires 2 Return for Rome as soon as possible and post my channel. Thank you so much for watching, like, subscribe, and see you next time.